any of you are aware of, but Millard parted ways for Habitat in 2004. And in 2005, he started the Fuller Center for Housing. And since that time, he ended up creating covenant partners all across the United States and globally. And so with that, his mission has carried on even after his passing in 2009. Our local partnership was ready to start projects in the spring of this year, but as we all know, the pandemic hit, and so we were delayed. But I have to say we weren't discouraged. We looked for projects that we were going to be able to do to help people staying outside and being safe. So our very first project was working with an elderly couple in Wyndham. All of their windowsills were rotting. And so we replaced windowsills. We painted part of their house. We painted around the trim. We had 15 people come together. And the people that came together, many of us didn't even know each other. We just came together on a Friday and we worked all day. We also did a lot of yard work for them. We took down some trees that were bending over. We cleaned up bushes around their house. We did anything we could to help them out. And that was our very first project. That was followed by three more projects this fall. We rebuilt a deck that was um, rotted and it was quite dangerous, especially heading into winter. We replaced the deck. We also did two more yard cleanups, which ended up in one case, it was getting all the acorns out of a woman's yard so she wouldn't trip and fall. But it was also cleaning out gutters. <clears throat> it was helping fix a skylight that was leaking. So it was doing everything that we could to make sure that, that two other seniors could stay in their home safely. One woman is bound by a wheelchair. The other woman, although she can get out, she just doesn't have the means to do a lot of work by herself. So the Sebago Fuller Center is really focused on partnering with other agencies like age-friendly efforts that are going on in so many communities like Southern Maine Agency on Aging. We're looking at other organizations and also getting the word out. Our primary focus is looking for projects that we can help people so that they're staying in their home safely. What that means over the winter months, it might be more helping with maybe somebody will need a handicap wrap, um, ramp. It might be that they need some more things done in the yard. We hope by spring with the pandemic and vaccines and the shifts that we'll be able to start doing jobs inside people's homes. Once again, we're focusing on seniors. So everything we do has to be by CDC guidelines and wearing masks. So with that, what we're doing right now is looking to build a list for people that you might know, or as we get the word out, that may be in need for us in doing spring projects. All of our funding comes from local efforts. We do not receive any funding on a national basis. We um, work from a pay it forward or blessing program. And the way that works is if we have somebody who's in need, for instance, working with rebuilding the deck, then we look at a family and what their financial capability is in terms of helping pay for the materials. And that may be that they're paying back a portion over a year, two years or longer. In some cases, it is just somebody will make a straight out donation to us. But the efforts that are done are to pay for the next project that's in the future. We were able to do a virtual bike ride 
in September. And due to very generous sponsors in the area, and for 15 riders who raised funds, we were able to raise $6,500. And being a new nonprofit, and knowing <laughs> that it's COVID-19, we were just so blessed to know that we were able to raise those funds. What we're looking for right now is to be able to get the word out. And we have done some press releases. We have been working in the last year to get the names and connections with people. We work with the churches to have them give us referrals. We're also always looking for volunteers to help us on projects. We're also always looking for donations. But our mission is simple. We know that for people to age in place, that they're healthier and that many people do not want to leave their homes. So if we can help them stay in place, then that's what we want to do. Right now, we serve Wyndham, Standish, and Raymond, and we hope in the future that we'll be able to expand into other communities. Right now, that's where our focus is. We do have a website. It's sebagofullerhousing.org, and we're also on Facebook and Instagram. So I would welcome any questions that you might have, and I'm hoping that some of you have heard about us and the projects that we've done. <clears throat> Questions for any, from anyone? Can we do some kind of an ad like on our TV station or TV channel? That would, that would be awesome. It's for people that can see it and put in for it, and then we can maybe somehow attach that where they can call. Would they call you guys? Would they call the town office? How does that work? It, um, they could call the town office, but we also have um, a website. We also have um, emails, phone numbers. So we would have that all in place. And it would be great if that's just listed with the town office as well. Okay. Hmm. We can put some, note, something in the Roadrunner too. Mm -hmm. Some schools have uh, community services, a graduation requirement. Are you aware of that? And do you work with the schools? Well, we had started, but due to the pandemic that curtailed it. But yes, we will be reaching out to the schools for community service. Okay. It's a it's a great opportunity for them to help us. I'm not sure what schools are for that. I know Poland does, but I'm not sure who else. Well, and I know Wyndham does too. Okay. Where would you be able to find um, a schedule or whatnot of your of your projects that you have in front of you? Is that on your website or? Yes, it is. And right now we have just completed the four projects so we're looking for and are receiving some recommendations for the spring but if something comes up in the fall and and we find out that somebody needs a ramp then we'll tackle those projects during the winter i love i love what you're doing mm -hmm. oh thank you I love what you're doing i, I truly do i love i mean that's why i ask because i'd like to i'd like to help i mean there's nothing better than helping the elderly in my in my book yeah. that can help themselves and that just the thrill and the happiness that they get from that is priceless well and the people that we've helped so far they've been moved to tears yeah i absolutely. mean when 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 we show up the woman that's wheelchair bound when we show up with the day we worked on her yard eight of us showed up and within a matter of hours we had her yard hedges trimmed, leaves done. Uh, she was just in tears. She just couldn't believe people were willing to do this. Yeah. Um, cool. So, and the founding members and the volunteers that are part of it, um, it's just a great group of people and we keep adding more volunteers. So there is information on how to volunteer at our, on our website too. Excellent. 
Do you have like pamphlets or brochures? We do have some um, business cards and we do have some pamphlets. Um, we've, we're in the process of almost creating a card rack because the brochure that we have is more tied to the national versus local. So we're in the process of doing a card rack that will have information on both sides. And Even I'll, if it's something we can put down at the town office when people come in, Sue. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, we have room for that. Okay. Don? Yes, I was going to suggest, um, Diane, if you got in touch with Kayla Gonzalez, who is our communications director, if you were to send your messaging, maybe send a synopsis of your programming, we can put it out on all our platforms. We have our Roadrunner newsletter that we do monthly with the Windham Eagle. We've got Facebook. We've got our website. We've got our television, you know, broadcast channels. And we probably have some other, you know, email uh, listservs. And uh, the library, of course, has that as well. You're probably working with them anyway. And so yes. there may be other nonprofits in town, but we could blast it out in a number of different ways to get more publicity. That's awesome, Don. Thank you. You're welcome. And I know you were helpful when I first contacted you about our bike ride and directed me to who I should be talking to about that as well. Any other questions? Other questions? I don't. Thank you so much. Um, and if you're aware of anybody that needs assistance, please get in touch with us. But I will make sure that you have materials. So you, you know, and your offer to help us blast this and get this out is awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And have a good holiday. You too. You too. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Okay. Next item of business is uh, Rotary Ice Fishing Derby, February 20th, 21, 2021. Ingo. Ingo, you're muted. Hi, dear. Good evening. My name is Ingo. I am a resident resident of Raymond. I live on Oak Ridge Road. And I'm representing the Rotary Club of Wyndham and Sebago Lake area. And we would like respectfully again ask for permission to hold our 20th ice fishing derby and polar dip. Questions? No, I assume that, assume that everything is in line and, you know, as you said, it's your 20th year, so you're not a rookie anymore. So, you know, what's gonna, <laughs> what, what could happen, what you know, can foresee and hey, everything you have in line from the fire department to police and all of that that's yes. needed. We will, uh, of course, closely work with the Sheriff's Department, the Game Wardens, and Mr. Uh, Chief Tupper, and with the office, can make sure all our uh, areas are covered. And we will have insurance. And of course, you're out of it. So we'll be right in the middle of it. Any challenges you're expecting based on COVID this time around as far as what you're going to have to do as far as uh, people in and out and things like that or? The CDC requirements, we go, of course, going closely by that. And I have the feeling we might have enough distancing on the lake. Uh, and I think people are now really sensitive about it and have learned a great deal. I think we all have learned this to stay away from each other. If I, guess, if I, like, I guess I guess I was more thinking like on the polar dip because uh, you got you got uh, public safety people in the water there and things like that. So that yeah, it introduces a challenge that you didn't have in the past. I uh, agree, and it has is being worked on. A Robin from the Chamber of Commerce is working with uh, with our club to set it up here. And she's very much aware of it and very sensitive to the, those things. And I'm sure I can report back to you if you wish about that. Yeah. Well, I think uh, you know, that as long as you work with uh, Bruce and Kathy on that, then we're you know, in good shape there. And go. Yeah. It, it, this Bruce, if you want to give me a call tomorrow, I would like to start the discussions on how we could do that. Polar dips, the biggest, I think, concern for all of us, where we have the changing tents and such close quarters. But I think we can come up with a plan. Uh, we just have to start early on to address all those issues. 
other than that, I'm, I'm good with the normal uh, plans that you guys put together and having our meeting. Thank you, Rob. We'll call you tomorrow morning. Great. Thank you. Is there, do we need a motion? Yeah, we need a motion to approve it. I'd like to make a motion to allow the Rotary Ice Fishing Derby to happen for year 2021. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Seeing all hands raised, motion is carried. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ingo. Thank you, Ingo. Thanks, Ingo. Uh, next item is formal appointment of new finance director. Don. Yes, I'm uh, pleased to recommend for confirmation of appointment Alex Aponte, who you can see here with his title right there on his uh, screen. Nice <laughs> backdrop. And so, uh, welcome, Alex. Lake. <laughs> I think most of you have already, already met Alex. He started actually on December 1st. And so he's uh, coming to us from the Androscoggin uh, Count Valley Council of Governments, where he was a finance manager. Um, Alex is an experienced uh, accountant, and uh, he graduated from the uh, Southern New Hampshire University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Studies with an accounting concentration. And so as far as uh, his uh, relationship with the town, he started at a Initial salary of 71,000, it will go to 73 after successful completion of probationary period. And then once he gets his uh, certified public finance officer credential, the salary will be 75,000 from that time on, as are all the other positions in the town will be governed by the town's merit system. And uh, so that's, that's the uh, relationship uh, from a salary standpoint. And, uh, but he's off, been off and running. I, I would tell you that I, <clears throat> I've been in this business quite a long time and I've never seen anybody with the kind of enthusiasm that he brings to this. Uh, I really, uh, and I'm, I'm joking a little bit, but I, I enjoy the Saturday night calls on, on stuff and uh, to ask me questions. And, and that was starting a couple of weeks before he came to the job. So he's got a lot of energy. He's got a lot of drive, a lot of great ideas. And I'm excited to have him as a part of our team. And I think everybody on the, uh, the town, uh, you know, management team would, uh, agree with that assessment. So I wholeheartedly recommend him for appointment and uh, and we're uh, happy to have him here. Thank you. Great to hear. Any, any questions on that? We take a motion on that. Motion to appoint Alex to the finance director position. Second. 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 All those in favor? Seeing all hands raised, motion is carried. You have two Alex's now in your office. <laughs> right, two Alex's and two Sue's. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad because when I was talking with Don earlier today, he said, oh, old, we have an old Alex and a new Alex. <laughs> <laughs> and there will be appointment papers on the back table for signature. Okay. Uh, next item is consideration of 21-22 uh, budget schedule. Alex, you're on. Yeah, so I essentially uh, took what has been done in the past um, in terms of uh, the schedule. Um, I did break it up a little bit. I tried to get all of the different departments all to meet at the same time so that way there's no duplication of having to meet twice. And um, so basic, and I also try to all incorporate the Tuesday meetings so that way we're not meeting on Mondays or, fr or Fridays. Um, and there, are, there is obviously gonna be some meetings that are not gonna be aligned with our normal, um, what I would say, you know, select uh, board meeting, um, but, based on what I've seen in the past, I basically replicated that. And even though there there is gonna be a learning curve for me because part of this budget processing is, you know, understanding the TRIO system, which is the system that we're gonna be using, uh, have been using. Um, I did go and sign up for all the different classes um, to get, you know, myself a little bit um, up to speed with that, um, that, that the system itself. Um, but, you know, it, it is, I, I 
created it basically on a draft form and you'll see that on both the proposed budget schedule and the proposed budget goals um, they are currently in draft form because i did want to get some input from the board of selectmen questions i'm assuming at this point uh, all the schedules all the, the meeting schedules are going to be are set for zoom right now if that would be correct at this point yeah and so as far you know so just be a little bit of coordination to be able to bring in some of the outside agencies and whatnot when we do that so that they're you know we, that kind of flows through well definitely yeah um i think i incorporated let me see looking at um administration yeah i think for march 2nd the uh, provider agencies um would be that would be the kind of the area the timeline that they would be uh we would be looking for that information but um but yeah it, it definitely gives us enough time to get everyone's input um, and speaking with the department head But at this point, yeah, this is, these are the dates that I kind of wanted to throw out there and see how everyone felt about. What we would do if the Board of Selectmen felt these dates, at least from a preliminary standpoint, were acceptable, there are no conflicts that you can see right at this minute, we would send it out to the Budget Finance Committee, have them take a look at it, get their feedback. Understanding, of course, if... Uh, history is our guide that we will have some adjustments as we move along right <laughs> yeah i mean that that's all there i mean obviously this you know developing the budget in terms of a uh, in the uh in the local government um perspective it, it, it takes a, it takes a village right so um i would definitely be open to looking at and talking with you all you know does this schedule work for you um I understand that some of us are winter birds, so uh, we want to make sure. But on the flip side, you know, we are doing this via Zoom, so I'm hoping that it could work. Um, I have no doubt, um, you know, and I have full confidence that in terms of getting this, you know, getting the budget based on the schedule uh, could be done. Uh, so, um yeah I, i'm open to feedback and if we need to change some date, uh, certain dates uh again i'm open to that as well yeah i mean we've you know in the past we you know we you know you set that you set that out there and, and it looks good and and then something blows up someplace but we just didn't <laughs> for that so you know, i think people people are pretty flex you know recognize that so uh I mean, I don't, you know, on, on the face of it, I don't see anything wrong with it. No, I'm good with it. Yeah. At this point, sending, sending that on to have uh, Bob's, Bob's group look at that and make sure he's got no, you know, they've got no major problem or issues there. Yeah, definitely. The only question that I had um, was more towards the end. And, I, you know, and it's hard to say because with, with COVID and all, like, um, are we going to be doing an annual town meeting or are we via Zoom? Is it going to be a referendum? Um, that's really my kind of, and, and again, that's more towards the end of the process. That, I think that, I think that's, that, that's a moving, a moving issue right now. Uh, you know, I mean, if you, last year was, you know, it, it, it was a moving target, number one, when it was actually going to happen and number two, how it was going to happen. So, uh, we'll have to see how things progress through the spring and see where you know where we are. I mean, ideally, we'd like it to be back into the regular mode of a regular meeting. But if that can't be, then we have to look at how do we how do we do it to try and get participation in there. So, right, sounds good to me. Other questions? No okay. questions here. Okay, next item would be uh, budget goals. Don. Okay, so the budget goals are in your e packet. I could run through them quickly if you like. Um, so these are budget goals for FY 21 22. This is a simplified version, I would say, of kind of what you've had for a number of years. 
So number one is maintaining or lowering the tax rate. Two, continuing commitment to improvement and maintenance of the town roads. Three, undesignated fund balance can be utilized with an existing policy to accomplish priority number one. Uh, number four is all budget areas are on the table for discussion and review. And number five, the core services driven budget. And so that's uh, what we have these days. There was a time when we had you know, twice as many, but uh, over time you've kind of whittled it down to, the, to this group. And so I guess what we're looking for is your feedback, your input, your desires with respect to the new budget as to what you'd like to see us come up with uh, for a draft budget, at least the, the framework of the draft budget anyhow. Comments, line? I think this year, as we all know, is going to be very unique, and it's going to uh, there's already extra costs that you typically wouldn't have. So this year, we need to, like we try to do every year, is be as tight as we can, but also priorities. I mean, we may need to spend money on certain things because they are worth and not worth neglecting. So we just need to really, really hit the ground and, and try and justify but um also just be thorough with what's needed and what isn't it's uh time to be even more creative yeah i appreciate that lawrence um i think that you know i tend to be very conservative in terms of spending and you know obviously uh, being a good steward of the tax revenue that we do get from our um, you know, for the, our citizens. So, um, so you, you know, you pretty much hit it on the nail. Marshall, any? No, I think we're good with, with uh, staying the course. Yeah. Teresa? Yep, we're good. Okay, so you've got the, you've got the schedule, you've got the goals, so we'll look forward to the next inputs on that. The next item is Consideration of Raymond Rec Advisory Board. Joe. Oh. Hi. Yes. Um, so a lot of communities have um, a Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, and it's a very good um, way to kind of connect with the community. And I think this um, will be a great way for me to get a, um, a pulse on, on the community as well. Um, so we would go through, um, we'd have one select board appointed member and four citizen board members um, with a uh, citizen board chair. Um, so we would go through a um, almost like a hiring process, interview process, um, people um, applying that way. Uh, once they, I have to, um, I'm going to have a look at a couple different, um, I believe it's a two year um, term. Uh, again, Wyndham, uh, Wyndham's Parks and Recs Advisory Board's kind of guidelines and um, can finalize some of those um, details, but um, this process would um, would allow us to have um, a, a pretty good input going forward on different charges that the board wants uh, from the Parks and Recreation Department um, and other pro possible programming and uh, just a very good way to uh, give information out to the community and receive information um, for the Parks and Rec Department. Okay, so at this point, it's it, it, the action is to just approve the formation of of that board. Then you'll have to come back when you when you have people for that to have those approved onto the board. Is that correct? That, that's what I would suggest. If you approve the concept creating the board, then we would advertise and and solicit uh, interested applicants. You'd probably conduct interviews and. Um, make some appointments. I'd like to add that one of the things that we did or I did when Joe first arrived was to have him sit down with a, a very veteran local rec director who subsequently became a town manager. So I'm not sure what, what that says, but that's what he did anyhow. But he he was over in uh, the town of Gray and then Bridgeton and he was in Berlin, New Hampshire. And so in Berlin, he had about 30 years experience. And he said this was an integral thing for the success of that position when it was created all those years ago. And so I think Joe is right on point with correct with following that advice. And I think it's something that other towns do routinely. And I think there will be uh, interest from our citizens. 
there will be buy-in and I think it will strengthen, you know, what's been a very difficult process in trying to get this thing rolling off in a pandemic. So I, I'm really excited to have this happen. And I, Joe has put together a nice outline, preliminary outline of the roles and responsibilities of the staff member director and then the volunteer uh, citizen advisory board. So I think this is the way to go. And, uh, you know, Joe has been doing everything he possibly can. And I know he's got some exciting winter programming coming and, so uh, once again, it's a tough, tough environment to be starting a new, new department, but this is a step in a positive direction. Well, yes. When, first off, Joe, I agree with the concept. Um, when we transitioned from the Tasseltop board to the recreation director function, we had made comments to the existing board members that they may be invited to participate going forward. So what I'd like to do is have Joe and I touch base. Uh, we'll go through those individuals and then he can contact them to see if they still have an interest in doing that. I know there are two of them that may not have an interest, but I think we have an obligation to the past board before we go into um, seeking public uh, through advertising. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I think on that, I agree with you to a point on that, Marshall, and I do think it is, but if that's the case, then we, and they are interested, I'm all for them coming on, but if we have to add more people on the board to make the board up then, to get more citizens involved, I say do that too. How about we well, send an invitation to the, to the previous board members that were doing this, reach out more personally to them and tell them we're doing this and that they could, you know, encourage to, to apply, or are you saying to give them a seat automatically? No, I don't think it'd be automatic. I think you, 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 no, you no, know, no. ask that you, you'd see if they have interest in applying for it. That's, That's what I'm suggesting. Right. Yeah. And obviously Joe would be charged to taking the best candidates, whoever that may be. But I think, I think on that they provide their, you know, credentials, letter of interest, and that would be the board of selectmen interview process or some subset of some, some interview panel and then recommendation or however you want to do it. Joe, how, yeah. many, how many did you want on there? Uh, I have five, uh, just because of the size of um, the town. Um, I believe some cities go with seven, um, bigger cities usually go with seven. Um, but I, I put five, but I mean, that's, I mean, we have a lot of interest. Um, I mean, we could always change that to seven if you, if you guys would want to. Well, I'm thinking just talking with um, like other citizens, like the rec committee, the, mm -hmm. the, that committee would probably have somebody, possibly baseball might have somebody, yep. um, ski might have somebody. So if you fill up the board with just those two, mm -hmm. then I don't think you're gonna get in as many citizens, which I think is, is needed. I could be wrong. So you might have to go bigger. But oh, yeah, no, that's that's a great point. I mean, there's a lot of uh, different agencies and recreation and in, in, in general is just so vast. Um, you don't know who you're um, who who would want to join. I mean, that's that's right. the whole point. You might of this. get nobody. Can, yeah. Right. I, um, but yeah, I mean, th that's kind of the point, too. I mean, if we need to make it bigger, um, I, I'm all for that. If there's a lot of different uh, groups that want to uh, have a say or be involved, we definitely don't want to turn, you know, turn turn away people. But. Nope. Okay. Cool. We're just approving a concept. We're not approving a, a number on the board. Right. Correct. Yeah. Can, no, this looks good. Which is still. Yeah. But again, so I, I think we all, we, I think we have an obligation to those previous board members to at least invite them to apply. We will do that. I think that's I think that's really good and respectful of that um, that board and all the effort they put in. Tassel top. Um, if Don so doesn't have the names, I do, Joe, so you can contact me. If you wish. Okay. And I think uh, Sue, Sue sent me a bunch of um, past years um, that I can pull up as well. Yeah, uh, sure I you. believe there's some email um, on that as well. You can pull it right off the minutes, too. Uh, do, do you, uh, so I guess um, as I go forward uh, and finalize some of this, uh, would you, would the board want to see a seven person um, advisory board? I think I you think should do what you feel is comfortable based I think, on I what think you what have. you want to do is gauge gauge what you've got for yep. you know, gauge what you've got for uh, 
response yeah. and things like that. And then you okay. work from there. Because I mean, it, at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is bring in, bring in across, you know, across as much as you can. So right. the fact is, so, you can also, you know, the, you could get into a situation where you, you know, you, you have a five or a seven, but you have some subcommittees of other, of, of other people too. So that's, they don't necessarily have to be on the, you know, on, on that mm. top side mm. of the committee, but they can still, they're still part and parcel to it. Okay. So I'll be flexible on uh, the five or seven board and I uh, can come back with um, uh, the final, final number for approval for the select board. Mr. Chair, there's also the, the option of having a five member board with two alternates. Yeah. So, I think, you know, the first order of business is, is gauge where the, where the interest is, you know, uh, because what we're trying to do, if you're trying to, if you're trying to bring in uh, new ideas and things like that, then, you know, don't, don't cut it off at the knees. Great. We hope it'll be seven because that means you'll have a big turnout. That's right. So it's really good. Diversity is great. Okay, so at this point, we just need a motion to bring the concept forward. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Seeing all hands raised, motion is carried. Okay, next item, consideration of new note road names. Is Kayla here or who's, who's Kayla, right now? Kayla is not, so I can. These are all road names that have been requested and evidently December, November and December are the months where people want to name roads. So uh, she has four. Normally she only has one every now and again. Um, they are all ones that she has checked against 911. Uh, e911 naming standards and they're fine they also don't uh, overlap with any other road names they aren't close uh, to other things that might get confusing for emergency workers or postal workers or anyone else do you want a motion on these yes do you want them individually yes okay motion to accept moxie lane as a new road name second all those in favor Seeing all hands raised, motion is carried. Motion to accept Lilac Lane as a new road name. Second. All those in favor? Seeing all hands raised, motion is carried. Let's is it crooked, crooked Creek Lane? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yep. Motion to accept Crooked Creek Lane as a new road name. Second. All those in favor? Seeing all hands raised, motion is carried. Motion to consider Oliver Way as a new road name. Second. Second. All those in favor? Seeing all hands raised, motion is carried. The okay, next item of business would be public comment. Yes, Marianne. Uh, Charles Levitt, Raymond Hill, not Mary Ann, not so good. Uh, I would like to make a comment and an observation about last month's meeting and a comment about tonight's meeting. Last month's meeting showed the public we are all passionate in our beliefs about our schools. Mr. Taylor, strongly believes that the RSU withdrawal was about causing a stink. That was his words. And not being pushed around. At a cost of $50,000, I would have chosen a less expensive way. Mr. Olson was passionate when he characterized my heavily researched and factual public comment as spewing. Mr. Bullock was steadfast that he was a neutral party in the debate despite hours of real time and archival video suggesting otherwise. Mrs. Sadak still holds her truths that there is nothing to apologize for 
because the no on one campaign told, and I quote, lots of lies. No on one was not a lobby or a political action committee. People who spoke in opposition to withdrawal were your neighbors and your friends. Kate Lavalley, Caitlin Lagasse, Janie Cummings, say their names. Grace Levitt, Marianne Amrick, Susan Accardi, say their names. Bob Goslin, Diana Frosland, and yeah, Charlie Levitt, say our names. Let me state emphatically, we are not liars. Mr. Willard's critical analysis of the defeat of the withdrawal effort after the town spent tens of thousands of dollars on newspaper ads, direct mailings, and not just one, but two consultants was, over, was that over 2,000 no voters, and I quote, didn't fully understand the issue. He went on to say he looks forward to working with the Wyndham schools. The Wyndham schools are the Wyndham Raymond schools, RSU 14. They are our schools. And if he hasn't always worked with them, he shouldn't be, never mind. My comment about tonight's meeting is this, and I'm glad to see Kathy at the table tonight, but I'm not sure in what capacity. Raymond has a very professional and competent deputy chief and health officer in Kathy Goslin. We are in the throes of a mass, massive health and economic crisis. Last month, we heard about a maybe policy for our parks. This month, we're considering new road names. No Raymond public health officer. Why isn't Chief Goslin invited to the table? Why aren't Raymond families and businesses important enough to have a standing agenda item utilizing our local expert. As a citizen and sh shareholder in this incorporated town, I'm just asking. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> the next item would be Slackman comment. Teresa. I just want to thank the road crew and the fire department for all their hard work over the crazy last couple of days um, with the power being out and the accidents and the poles being down and you guys worked in the public works. You guys did a great job and we really want to thank you for that. And I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I'm hoping 2021 is a lot better than this 2020. So that's all I wanted to say. You know. And it's been really cold. Yeah. <laughs> Other comments? Okay, next item, town manager report and communications. Don, you're muted. Sorry about that. So we first have to confirm our dates for our upcoming regular meetings, January 12th, 2021, February 9th, 2021. Okay, so reminder of upcoming holiday schedule, Friday, December 17th, uh, closing at 12 p.m. for town office Christmas party. Thursday, December 24th, uh, closing at 12 noon for Christmas Eve. Friday, December 25th, Christmas Day. Friday, January 1st, uh, 2021, New Year's Day. Okay, <clears throat> next agenda item is consideration uh, going into executive session. Is there a motion? Yep, motion to go into uh, executive session pursuant 1 MRSA section 405-6E. Second. All those in favor? Motion is carried. 
we are in executive session. So uh, all those not in executive session, please log out. Okay, thank you. We're coming out of executive session. Is there a motion? A motion to come out, or do you want the motion that we are deciding? No, we've already come out, so now you just All need right. to motion. All right, I'd like to make a motion to begin the dangerous structure process against the three buildings in the subject property. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Seeing all hands raised, motion, motion is to adjourn. Where's Sam? Sa Sam Sleeping. has to leave at 7.30. Sleeping, uh, you know that. Okay, so it's been moved it's to seven, adjourn. Seven. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? We didn't even miss. <laughs> Motion is carried. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you Thank all. Thank you, Kathy. Be safe, Kathy.